longtime fans of the Dark Horse podcast will know that we have long discussed the evidence for the lab leak hypothesis and compared it to the evidence for what is treated as the null hypothesis that this emerged from nature, possibly through an intermediate species, but ultimately from bats. Now, there have been developments in the last couple of weeks in this story, but they are not scientific developments, interestingly enough. What they are is social developments amongst scientists and those who report on them. So maybe we should put up the letter that emerged this week in Science Magazine. It's, it's called Investigate the Origins of COVID-19. It has um, 18 signatories um, in including a number of notable people, um, one, will, of, one of whom you will speak, yep. speak to. Um, quote, as scientists with relevant expertise, we agree with the WHO Director General, the United States and 13 other countries, and the European Union that greater clarity about the origins of this pandemic is necessary and feasible to achieve. We must take hypotheses about both natural and laboratory spillovers seriously until we have sufficient data. A proper investigation should be transparent, objective, data-driven, inclusive of broad expertise, subject to independent oversight, and responsibly managed to minimize the impact of conflicts of interest. Public health agencies and research laboratories alike need to open their records to the public. Investigators should document the veracity and provenance of data from which analyses are conducted and conclusions drawn so that analyses are reproducible by independent experts. Yeah, I only wish the letter ended with the single word sentence, obviously, right? <laughs> it is so clear that this is a viable hypothesis and it should have been investigated seriously from the beginning rather than dismissed as it has been. But what I want to do is put it in context. So first thing to say is that the most important thing about this letter is the third author. The third author is Ralph Barrick and Ralph Barrick is the... Uh, lead investigator, the PI, in the UNC lab that does uh, gain-of-function research on bat-borne coronaviruses. It's one of the two leading labs in the world for this kind of work, the other one being at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the Zhejiang Li Lab. And so to have one of two people at the very forefront of this technology come forward and author a letter that says this is a viable hypothesis and should be fully investigated is to say we have been right all along. This was a plausible hypothesis from the beginning deserving of scientific respect, which is the opposite of what it got. What it got was ridicule. In fact, in the leading journal, um, The Lancet, those the who- The leading medical journal? The leading medical journal, not, The Lancet. I'm I think JAMA is probably, I, I, I don't know that the Lancet is the leading right. medical journal. In a leading medical yeah. journal, um, one of two prominent early publications dismissed explicitly as a conspiracy theory and those who talked about it as conspiracy theorists, those who were interested in looking into the lab leak hypothesis. Um, so to have Ralph Barrett come forward and say, in fact, this is a viable hypothesis and de deserves investigation is a rare triumph where those who uh, were portrayed as cranks at the outskirts, um, who were actually correct and had the evidence with them, have been in some sense vindicated. Now, I do think there's- a As I've said before, I don't like the word vindicated here because what we all need to be doing all the time, especially when we wear the mantle of science, is looking for all possible explanations and keeping all the possible explanations alive so long as they are not falsified. Well, I agree. But when I say vindicated, mm -hmm. so this letter, if it is taken seriously and if we don't see funny business downstream of it, which is a possibility, sure. we're already seeing a little bit. But um, if this letter is taken as- the ground floor, and now we proceed from it as the letter suggests that we should do, then the point is, okay, now we can begin to compare the evidence fairly. What has been vindicated is those who said the lab leak hypothesis is clearly viable and those who say otherwise are incorrect. Yeah. It's a, it's a vindication for the scientific method. And it's a reveal once again that those people who were saying you cannot consider that were actually acting in an anti-scientific way. Absolutely. And um, if I may, there is an MIT technology technology review article, if you would show this, Zach, um, that came out in the wake of um, that <clears throat> science letter. And I just want to read one <clears throat> One paragraph from it, from it, the chief scientist for emerging disease at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, Shizeng, 
Xi Zhengli, said in an email that the letter's suspicions were misplaced and would damage the world's ability to respond to pandemics. Quote, it's definitely not acceptable, she said of the group's call to see her lab's records. Who can provide an evidence that does not exist? It's a very interesting statement, mm -hmm. um, but I would point out that one of the really important things about this letter, and you know, it isn't just Ralph Barrick, but the fact that he shows up there is the jaw-dropping fact of it. The fact that it has a lot of top people, including quite a number of people whose specialty is evolutionary, which mm -hmm. I think is actually also an indication uh, that you and I have been on the right track here, that the evidence that compels people to get uh, out in front here yeah. is, is largely evolutionary. Um, but the, um, where was I headed? Damn. I don't know. I'll get it back in a second. Okay. Um, so, oh, I know what it is. The fact of Ralph Barrick showing up in mid-May saying lab leak hypothesis is viable covers all of the various things that were already on the table. That means it is viable in spite of denials from the Xi Zhengli lab. This is a colleague mm -hmm. of Xi Zhengli. This yeah. is a sometimes collaborator who is saying not only, he, he is implying by showing up here, he is implying that not only is SARS-CoV-2, as we find it, consistent at a technical, at a molecular level with techniques that might have been used to enhance it in the lab, right? Mm -hmm. He is saying that the denials that he has heard are not compelling to him as a leading expert in the field, one of two top labs in a position to know what is and isn't possible, what might or might not have been done. So this is absolutely stunning to have him emerge. And I will say he has said before, he has indicated one cannot rule out lab leak, but he has done it uh, when pressed. Here, he is coming out in front, and that's really important. And although I do think it's very late and he should have done it much earlier, I'm glad to see him there. Also worth noting, he is co-author here. In fact, the second author on this paper, uh, paper is Alina Chan, mm -hmm. who is, in my opinion, a great hero of this story because she is inside the academy, has correct expertise to speak about uh, molecular evidence and she's early career which means this is dangerous to her That's at right. a level that it wouldn't be or would be much less so if she were more advanced so to have them co-authors on this paper is significant that's really good news it is really good, news. Really good news and uh, i think uh, she deserves our gratitude yeah. and congratulations to her on uh, getting this letter published at this level and that's the other most important thing here is not only do you have um, people of unimpeachable credibility saying that the lab leak hypothesis is viable and deserves investigation, but you have them saying it in the journal Science, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, the journal Science has, yes. So un unlike The Lancet, about which I'm just not as sure, Science and Nature are, are understood to be, you know, whether or not these reputations are still founded, but right. are understood to be the two most important and prestigious science journals in the world. Yes. And important because science exists uh, as the sort of other side of the um, the duality that is science and nature, right? So science, so nature, the journal science, the journal and science and the journal nature, <laughs> yeah. right? The journal nature is a British journal that mm -hmm. is the other top journal. And you might add cell if we were talking about molecular biology, but for general science, you've got science and nature and nature was the place where the Christian Anderson uh, letter was published at the beginning uh, of the pandique, uh, pandemic, claiming, I don't know where that the came pandique. from. <laughs> pandique. <laughs> I don't think pandique is a thing, and I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with pandemics. But yeah, anyway, Christian right. Anderson published uh, a letter early on claiming molecular expertise that actually ruled out the possibility yeah. that this was a lab leak, which is obvious nonsense and has been obvious nonsense to everyone who has looked at it. Uh, carefully, um, without a bias. Yeah. Um, but in any case, now... So we, to the degree that there were wagons being circled, it seems that uh, Ralph Barrick, at least, was either not inside the circle or has left the circle. Well, you know, I also... I don't think we're likely to ever know exactly why we won this one. Mm -hmm. But we did win this one. Win in this case means keeping the hypothesis alive until it has actually been assessed. Yep. I am not claiming that we know the answer here, though I think one answer is much more likely than the other, as I've said repeatedly. But Well, there aren't just two. 
hypotheses on the table. It's, there's not a one or the other. There, well, there are multiple possibilities. There are two broad classes. Fair and enough. so the particular details okay. will be interesting either way. But, yeah. but in any case, um, I don't think we will ever fully know why this went so differently than other cases where uh, whistleblowers and analysts try to um, force recognition of an obvious truth. In general, that's a failure. Yeah. The powers that be when they have uh, a desire to advance one story and hide another are typically very successful at doing it, especially when they have all of the important properties. I mean, think about who it is who is lined up against investigating the lab, lab leak hypothesis. It's all the major tech platforms. Mm -hmm. It's major mainstream newspapers. It's the academy, right? It's you know, up until now, the major science journals, yep. right? That's an incredible arsenal. And to have, you know, the outsiders, the dark horses, right, um, actually successfully force recognition of something uh, that actually puts all of those forces back on their heels is amazing. Why it happened is a little hard to say. But part of the answer is those who were on the other side were um, very careful, right? Many were highly qualified. And there was a lot of courage. And because of that, I think somebody like Ralph Barrick, he's a smart guy. And I think he is sure to recognize this isn't going away. And so anyway, he, you know, I, I, I'm glad he has arrived at, at the conclusion he's apparently arrived at. And I'm glad that the journal Nature, I mean, Science, um, was uh, willing to publish this.